This is a recreation of the Denver Ethereum meetup of last night. Uh, we did a great event and uh, made a screencast of creating a smart contract from a dumb contract. However, I closed the lid of my laptop before hitting stop on the recording and ended up losing that. So I'm just going to recreate it here so we can share that with everyone. We start with an empty smart contract here. And uh, it turns out this is a valid smart contract, but it's really more of a dumb contract. We can create it uh, in Ethereum the normal way by sending the data of the contract to an empty address. And this is possible to do. Um, but then this contract will in fact exist on the blockchain. It will be available to accept Ether sent to it, but it will never leave that contract because uh, the contract has no logic for how that uh, funds should be dealt with. So um, that's a kind of a dumb contract, but we can make it a smart contract. And um, so the approach here is we'll just um, minimally increment a contract that does something more and more useful, but each step along the way could be something that you could do something with. So starting off, we're just going to send um, the tiniest amount of oh dear, the tiniest amount of uh, ether to some specific address, and so that it's a, a real sample, I'll, I'll grab a real address. Um, I like to grab mine. Yeah, and we can put that in here, and we'll have a real contract that does something actual. Uh, in this case, uh, each time someone um, contacts the contract, it'll spend one Y to this um, address, which happens to be my address. It, it does something real. Again, it's a, a real contract. Um, still kind of dumb, uh, but it will work. Um, and we can improve upon that. Instead of just sending a, a very specific amount of ether to a very specific address, we can send the uh, amount of the incoming transaction to the person who made the transaction. So um, this is at least neutral. It's a boomerang smart contract. Every money you send it, it comes right back to you. So at least it's not bad in the sense that it, you're not sending money into a black hole. Um, but it actually becomes a piece of something useful um, or more useful than this. Um, so at the Denver Ethereum meetup, we talked about um, it, it would be neat if we could all vote on uh, the kind of beer that we would drink later uh, in the evening. And um, that's quite possible in Ethereum, and I think Ethereum is uh, well suited for voting type applications. So we're going to expand on this to create a voting application to vote on beer, perhaps. Um, the way we can do that is uh, we, we want to um, collect some data. So going again to the interface for um, interacting with a contract. Normally, when you're not creating a contract, you put the address of the contract here. You put the amount of funds that you're sending here and then you put any data that you would like to send here. So in this case, if we're voting on the kind of beer, we could vote for Guinness um, by putting the word Guinness there as the data, and then that data will be available to us in our contract, which we're creating over here. Um, so the other alternative might be, I don't know, Fat Tire as the alternative beer. So uh, we want to know which of these two options people voted for, and we want to keep track of it. So when we keep track of things, we generally want to do some saving of data. So we can pause to talk about how we save data in Ethereum. Uh, and for non-programmers, I like to make the analogy that there is a, um, a post office with two walls full of post office boxes. Uh, one wall of post office boxes is uh, temporary. Everything in those boxes gets flushed at the end of the day. And the other wall of post office boxes is um, more permanent. Anything you put in those boxes stays there until you uh, replace them with something else. Um, and these post office boxes have um, numbers on them, as you would expect. And um, it allows you to put things in, keep them there, and take them out later when you need them. The numbers help you do that. Um, and so in Ethereum, we have these virtual uh, post office box slots. I call them storage slots. And um, uh, it, it turns out Ethereum gives you a lot of these. In fact, it gives you so many uh, storage slots that there are more storage slots than there are stars in the visible universe. So we have lots of options for where we put our data. And that's handy because we can um, pick a box labeled appropriately for the kind of data that we're storing. So with that said, we can, um, for example, imagine we may want to take the vote that's coming in. And uh, even though the boxes have numbers on them, we can um, realize that uh, a numbered box has a corresponding letters as long as each letter has a, 
a, a number, for example. So there is a box that we could pick out of this wall that would be the vote box, and we could stuff the data that's coming in into that box. So when the transaction data, the transaction input, um, which represents um, Guinness in this case, comes into the smart contract, then we're stuffing that in a mail slot called vote, or storage slot, if you will. Um, now again, there's two kinds of storage slots. There's the temp slots that get flushed at the end of this contract, and then there's the save slots, which are available from time to time um, to each uh, time this contract runs. So this corresponds to computer memory and hard disk space, uh, respectively. Uh, and we want to use the save slot type because we want this vote to be persistent even when this contract ends running. Um, but there's something wrong with this. That is, uh, if we just leave the contract here, then we have a functioning contract, but when somebody votes, it will get stuffed in this vote um, mail slot. And then when the next person votes, that will get replaced by their vote. So we'll only have one vote at a time, and we can't see everybody's votes, and so that's no good. What we'd rather do is, um, instead of using the mailbox that we're designating as the vote mailbox, the single one, we're going to use a mailbox associated with the, the, the caller, that is, the person making the vote. And they have an address which we can access using this contract caller block. And we realize that we actually have a mailbox that is numbered the same as their um, address. So this way, each caller has their own mailbox with their own vote inside of it, and this is a more effective way to, to track the votes. Um, so this is a functioning voting contract, actually, and uh, we could uh, stop here, but um, one other feature we'd like to add is the ability to um, save that same data in a different way. We'd like to see an incrementing counter of the votes as they come in for the voting options. So if our voting options are Guinness and Fat Tire, then we'd like to have a Guinness uh, storage slot and a Fat Tire storage slot. And inside this, we'd like to see the running total of votes that have come in for each of those options. So that's easy to do. We use the same concept and we use the transaction input. Again, that's Guinness in our example. And instead of being the data this time, it's going to be the label for the storage slot. Um, and inside of it, we're going to put something very close to the data that was in there before. If we do this, we'll have taken out what was in there and then stuffed it right back inside without changing it. So obviously what we want to do instead is um, modify it a little bit. We want to take what was in there before and add one to it and then replace the old contents with the new incremented number. And this allows us to do that. So here we have a, uh, two ways of storing the same vote now. One is associated with the person who made the vote and one is a uh, running counter of all the votes that have come in for that option. Um, so now this is more useful, and again, we could stop here. Um, but uh, I'll take it a step further than we did um, at the meetup, and uh, we'll uh, expand on this a little bit. So it would be interesting to have a, uh, a beer fund and administrator for this voting contract. So you can vote for the beer you'd like to have, and then some administrator will uh, be able to collect those funds and use them to buy the beer. Um, at the end of the night. Um, so in order to do that, then we have to designate who the administrator is going to be. And typically the administrator would be the person who's created this smart contract to begin with. Um, and in order to make use of the uh, mechanism that Ethereum gives us for this, we want to use um, an initialization block. Uh, an initialization block allows us to do certain things um, only at the very beginning of a contract's life only when it's created, and then um, never again. So we're going to make that available using this init block. And we actually want what we've been uh, building to be part of the body. That is the stuff that gets run every time the contract is contacted, as opposed to just the first time. What we want to happen on just the first time is we want to save who this administrator is. And we're going to put that in a, in a slot. We're just going to call that admin. And uh, that will do. And in there, we're going to put the address of the person who created it. So we'll have that available as the contract caller when it's being created. And this way, we have this um, always available in, in the future. Good. So um, what are we going to do with that information? What we'd like to do is have a, a little test that says, if that person is um, calling into the contract, then we want to release all the collected funds to them. So this is a condition. Um, well, it's a condition block, but the condition itself is empty at the moment. And the condition we want is, does the person who's now calling in um, match the administrator that we saved earlier? And we can build that like this. 
have a good condition here. We're going to make that part of our conditional logic. And the thing that happens when the admin is calling in is um, similar to this. It's not going to be a boomerang anymore. Um, when normal people vote for, in the contract, any money they send in will collect in the contract. But when the administrator calls in, then we want the entire amount of the contract's balance, contract balance, to be spent to the administrator. Good. So there we have a, a complete voting contract with a built-in facility for gathering funds, and we can use those funds to purchase all the beer that people voted for. So uh, I hope that was useful, and uh, apologies to the people at the meetup that they didn't get to see the um, recording of the actual event, uh, but this is, a, I guess, an interesting recreation of it. And um, the, I guess the one other thing we talked about at the meetup was uh, sort of a, as a preface to all this, what is Ethereum and what is a smart contract? So um, if you're not already familiar with those topics, then you can um, gather a little bit about it from what we've done here, but also at Ethereum, sorry, at etherscriptor.com, you can click this about tab and you'll get um, some words from me about my take on what Ethereum can be and um, how you might think about it.